Hello everybody, hope you're having a good day today. If you know it, say it with me. I have got my coffee, I have got my Bible, of course I have all of you. And I was laughing because today is the day to drink something cold. It is so hot out there. Uh, but also, happy National Chicken Wing Day. Come on, chicken wings. Go to Wingstop today and get yourself some chicken. Ask them if they got any for free, because today is Chicken Wing Day. So, happy uh, chicken Wing Day, and welcome to Acts chapter 26. Chapter 26. Very interesting chapter in the New Testament because Paul is, he's still on trial, and he's been talking with this one particular guy named Festus, and King Herod Agrippa comes into town. And while Festus and Agrippa are together, Agrippa says, I would love to talk to this guy named Paul. Now, I want to really talk about this this idea of Paul talking to two different audiences. And it, it's really amazing how when you live your life of faith, it hits different people different ways. And you never know who you're talking to. Because Paul, he he's probably told this story who knows how many times and how many times to, to Felix and then Festus took over for Felix and Festus hears it and now Agrippa's here. And so he tells this story again about what's going on. And when he's finished telling his his story, his testimony about what happened, uh, Festus has one idea. And it says this in 26, verse 24. Suddenly Festus shouted, Paul, you are insane. Too much study has made you crazy. <laughs> and so he's saying, listen, you are out of your mind. And then there's a very different answer from Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa says, do you think so quickly you're going to turn me into a Christian? In other words, he has a very different response. Festus just thinks he's crazy. Herod Agrippa says, wait a minute, you're not crazy. You're actually really smart. You know exactly what you're talking about. And you're not just trying to tell me a good story. You're trying to reach me. And what an amazing thing, because maybe you need to know a little bit of background about this Herod Agrippa guy. Herod Agrippa is, is a Roman um, officer who had a very tumultuous relationship in his political affairs. He uh, had squandered the wealth of his family over and over again and would have actually not been not been anything at all except he was good friends with Caligula, uh, the horrible emperor of Rome, and he kept getting appointments because of Calig Caligula and kept getting these different opportunities, even though he was apparently not, not the best of rulers. However, he loved Jewish ways and customs and history, and so he knew the Jewish law very, very well, but he was also a very ambitious person. And because he loved the Jewish people and he was against this new thing called Christianity, that Herod Agrippa was the one who had Paul, um, or excuse me, had uh, Peter arrested. He's the one who also had James, the brother of Jesus, uh, killed. And so he's already got a pretty rich history, not just with the Jewish people, but with these young Christians that are going on. And in this moment, Paul has no problem standing up and going, you know what? I'm still going to try to reach you. You are not beyond the love of God. And what that speaks to me is, is that we're going to be environments in environments in our life where we're not always going to be received because of our love for Jesus. We're going to be in places where we go, well, I might as well not even try here, you know, because no one's going to believe in Jesus here. But we have no idea what God may be doing behind the scenes. Honestly, of the two people knowing their histories, I would have expected Herod Agrippa to have been the one that said, Paul, you're crazy. But instead, it was Herod Agrippa who obviously heard this very differently. And even though he didn't receive Christ in that moment, he said, I see what you're doing, and I see that there's probably something to this. And so what you know what that teaches me? Is that in every environment I'm in, I just do my best, and I let God do the rest. In every environment, environment I'm in, I'm not, I'm not called to be perfect, I'm called to be faithful. You know, in every situation, I'm not called to be perfect. Just do the best I can and to be faithful and let God do the rest. And I want to know, what, what is a situation in your life where you're, maybe you're saying, I don't even want to try. It's impossible. It's too hard. I don't even want to mess with that. Or I'm not even going to pray about that. That's, that's too hard. It's too difficult. There's no way that God would do that for me. There's no way God would reach this person, whatever. What if you just did your best 
and let God do the rest. Because as you can see with Paul, that's what he did. And wow, what a response from the person who should have been the most against Paul in the room. Looks as though he was the only one in the room who really got it. And that encourages me to realize that God is always doing more than I think he is. And it just, it spoke to me to do my best and to let God do the rest. I don't know how maybe that spoke to you. I want to know in the comments below, you know, if you've been reading this with me, what chapter 26 meant to you. I don't know what it's going to be. I tell you what I do know. That is that God loves you more than you understand. He's for you more than you realize. Listen to me. You're probably doing better than you realize. You know why? Because you got up one more day. And I know that God has not changed his mind about you. And if nobody's told you today, I love you so much. Hope you have a great day. I can't wait to see you here tomorrow for chapter 27 as we're about to finish up the book of Acts right here on Daily Hope.